Before we get into today's topic, we shall pay our honors to the lovely Victoria for purchasing her custom RBG Till All Gamers Are One t-shirt. If you're interested in receiving a shout out and some cool apparel, then slide on over to teesprings.com and purchase your RBG shirt now. All you have to do is take a selfie of you wearing the shirt and tweet it at me on Twitter and you can send it directly to me on Google+. It's a good way to support the channel and unite the TF and gaming community. After all, we're a family, right? With that said, let's get on with the video. What's up you guys, my name is RBG and welcome back to another Transformers The Last Night update slash trailer analysis. This is a video segment where I break down all the recent trailers and news regarding TF5 while giving minor speculations on things that haven't yet been confirmed. Today I'll mainly be covering trailer 4 and last week's TV spot entitled Secret Past or Secret History. I mention those videos in that specific order because I'm not going to break them down chronologically based on the release. Because there's so much to talk about and I feel like I'm going to be going on a tangent in this particular upload. I've noticed that most shots in this trailer are mainly the same ones we've gotten from the earlier trailers, only extended, so I won't talk about them as much as I'm going to be doing for the newer scenes. So let's just go ahead and kick things off with the international trailer that we got over 48 hours ago. This trailer was a good balance of human and transformer interaction. I honestly think it did a good job of bringing in some of the new action sequences without completely spoiling the more climactic points that we'll be seeing in this film. That's been something I've been weary about when breaking down these clips because I'm usually evasive when it comes to trailers. Like I just watch one and I'm done but since the demand for these breakdowns are at an all time high and you guys enjoy them so much, I have to stick my neck out for you guys. The first 35 seconds of this trailer is basically a mesh of what I've already covered regarding Cogman, whom we get a better close up shot of. He's a sociopathic headmaster transformer who was sent to find Cade Yeager due to him having some kind of link with the Arthurian Knights. A couple seconds later we see him meet up with Sir Edmund Burton and Vivian Wembley who are also said to have ties to the Knights and Transformers from medieval times. This is pretty much a shorter version of the scene we already got at the IMAX screening and MT Movie Awards with slight touch ups on the editing and CGI of the actual Transformers. Now I have to say I'm very impressed with this film's visuals compared to the previous installment being TF4. Even though this film is most likely still in its post production phase, I can tell that the visual effects team and ILM aka Industrial Light and Magic have mastered the lighting and shading. In Age of Extinction, the CGI looked like it took a nosedive compared to the first three films. Certain shots of the Autobots just looked too cartoony when they were in front of real people and environments. I don't know if it was due to them using newer character models or what, but it looks like they have a tighter grasp on the CGI and it looks and flows a hell of a lot better. We just need to see more on-screen transformations this time. I mean, the film is called Transformers for a reason. But anyways, we get a better high definition shot of Hot Rod who's said to be the guardian of Vivian Wembley. One thing I'd like to note is his voice. We know for sure that he'll have a French accent and we've heard a little of it from the MTV Movie Awards clip, but from what I've researched, that might not be the official voice. The executive producers have mentioned that they're still trying to find the ideal voice actor to play the role and my god I hope this is still true. Now I'm kinda over the fact that he'll have a French accent, I mean he explains in the IMAX footage that he talks that way because he likes the sound of it. It kinda reminds me of Jazz and how he embraced sort of a hip hop culture slang simply by browsing through the internet, but the voice we've heard for Hot Rod doesn't really fit him at all. It has too much raspiness to it and it doesn't sound like a young hot headed Autobot. So hopefully they get someone who sounds a bit younger. Moving on we get a better extended scene where Dragonstorm leads Merlin to an old abandoned Cybertronian ship. I had mentioned in one of my previous videos that Dragonstorm might be leading Merlin to receive what we call a MacGuffin which is basically what the plot of this film will revolve around and that looks to be the case. This time around we may have gotten a better look at Dragonstorm's robot mode as he hands Merlin this mysterious staff. I think we may have already seen his alt mode in trailer 3 since we see him sling Optimus Prime to the ground and you see this giant foot try to stomp on him. I know for a fact that this has to be his robot form simply because of the red and black color scheme. If you've been following all the toy leaks closely, Dragonstorm was pretty much the only Knight Transformer who had red and black on his action figure. I originally thought that the red was over exaggerated on the toy and it could be some kind of energy that seeps from the crevice of his armor but it looks like the red will most likely be a paint job. Now regarding the mystery artifact, I still think it's the Omega Key which possesses the power to open the Omega Lock. I stand by that speculation and I think the narration given in this trailer may give us some sort of confirmation of this. If you listen closely, you hear Sir Edmund Burton say, 
To save our future, we must unlock the past. Not sure if that saying will hold much weight, but when he said unlock the past, I feel as if he's alluding to the Omega Lock. But it could be anything for all that matter, but I just have this nagging suspicion that that's what it is. I also noticed in trailer 3 that Vivian was seen wielding that same staff so she may be a descendant of Merlin and possess this mystery power Edmund Burton told her about. She's supposed to be the key that could potentially save or destroy humanity. With that said, I'd like to skip forward to this awesome scene where we see Optimus Prime slaying one of the Cybertronian Knights. Now I've noticed with all the scenes involving Optimus, he seems to be in that same dark underwater location. I'm not sure if he'll be there for the majority of the film or somewhere near the climax. What I find strange is throughout most of the shots when he has his possessed purple eyes, there's always a different texture of metal on his face. Like some moments we see close ups where his face looks like it's been cyberformed or corrupted and the color has somewhat vanished. This could be an indication of how much power Quintessa is using to control Optimus, like maybe he's still fighting it. Anyways, in this scene, I think the knights that have been shown fighting Optimus have been lying in slumber and waiting for any imminent threats so that they can protect the mystery relic in question. If you look closely before Optimus impels the down knight through his back, it looks like he just got finished slaying another one earlier. You can tell by the green energon blood gushing upward and if I'm not mistaken the deceased knight's shoulder pauldron is visible. Next up is another great looking shot of Bumblebee wielding what most of us have assumed to be the Forge of Solus. Now I mentioned in the last video I did that for some strange reason the visual effects team decided to downgrade B back to his Dark of the Moon character model. This version was a robot mode slightly upgraded and retooled with some new combat features thanks in part to the record's mastery in weapons. With these new upgrades he was granted the ability to slightly disassemble his body parts and use various weapons while in vehicle form and this method was known as a stealth mode. A pretty gimmicky trick that we didn't really see in Age of Extinction but it looks like it's back in full force in TF5. As you can see, Bumblebee looks like he'll be utilizing this method again to combat his arch rival Barricade in a high speed car chase. I've seen this scene in some of the previous trailers but I wasn't sure if it was exactly what I thought it would be but I guess it's safe to confirm that stealth evasion mode is back in full force. Before I move on I would also like to point out that even though this is just a retooled version of TF3's Bumblebee, it looks like the design team decided to give him a minor facelift, literally. If you look at his battle mask it slides on differently compared to all the earlier versions and the eye sockets seem to be covered with lenses this time around. Moving on I would like you to take a look at the Autobot who I hope has the least amount of dialogue, Hound. A pretty insignificant Ironhide wannabe who looks like they'll be doubling as a wrecker and medic this time around. Now we've seen this shot in a couple trailers but is it me or does it look like the first aid symbols on his body have been recolored of some sort? I remember in some of the earlier scenes the symbols were red and white. They were even that way in the earlier reveal posters and toys. But for whatever reason the post production team have decided to make these symbols black and white. As if that's going to make him look less idiotic or annoying. In the next shot we see a better image of the Mystery Fortress or the Omega Lock. In one of my videos I mentioned that we may have gotten a full view of what it looks like in its entirety based on one of the promotional posters. And this scene pretty much confirms that statement. It looks like some weird looking spike that was driven into the Earth's core. If my recollections are correct, some of you even mentioned that it sort of reminds you of the Quintesson ship Hot Rod and Cup used in the original 86 film. I think it could be a callback to that film. I mean, there have been various callbacks where certain action sequences were reused in a more realistic approach and Optimus did die in TF2. What I found interesting about Age of Extinction is how it followed a similar trend that the animated movie did. If you notice, when we got our second generation of Transformers in TF4, they were more proportioned and humanoid looking compared to their earlier versions. This was literally the same exact instance with the original animated film, where the newly introduced robots were more proportioned instead of having the box shaped body parts the first wave Transformers had. I find it ironic that Galvatron was involved in this cosmetic upgrade twice since he was originally a second wave Transformer in G1 and a second wave Transformer in Age of Extinction and now we're getting Hot Rod. But to get back on subject we have this beautiful shot of the Quintesson Empress Quintessa whom I'm assuming will be like the birth mother of the Transformers. Now I know that this is a reimagining of a character or a planet being turned into a character, but I was assuming that her overall look would be a little different. I mean for the most part the Quintessons are supposed to have this techno organic look like we've seen from the earlier iterations in movies, but it looks like she'll mostly be made of some kind of metallic alloy. But I'm not saying this is a bad thing because it looks freaking awesome nonetheless, and it looks like she's gonna demand every scene she's in. Moving on, I'd like to talk about this rather peculiar shot of Optimus Prime fighting the Infernocons. 
a little bit of the same scene we got from trailer 3 but a little different. Last time I mentioned that we only saw one of the Inferno Con characters who just so happened to be in the form of multiple copies, but in this particular scene we seem to have all the different Inferno Cons and I think it's safe to assume that they're all combined to make up Infernicus in this particular fight sequence. It's a brief shot so if you blink you might miss it, but shortly before we see Optimus deliver an aerial slash to the Inferno Conj, you can clearly see that it's Infernicus on its knees. It's pretty easy to tell by the size and proportion of the character because in one shot the multiple Infernicons look relatively short compared to Optimus Prime and their head sizes look pretty normal. But in this shot the head and horns look a lot bigger and the arms look similar to the ones seen on the leaked toy figure we got a while back. Now I'm gonna guess that they're somehow indestructible and can remold their bodies into various shapes to adapt because their forms don't look like they're made from standard Cybertronian metal. I feel like the more Optimus slashes them down, the more they'll sort of shapeshift and alter their forms. Next up we have what looks to be an epic battle between Megatron, Hound, and Hot Rod in a mysterious underwater lair, and it looks like the Autobot I love to hate will bite the bullet he uses as a personal cigar, folks. But in all seriousness, I hope no Autobot casualties happen in this film. Megatron seems to be doing some major damage with his battle axe in this sequence. Seeing him and Hot Rod in the same room automatically puts me in the mind of the scene we got back in the animated film where Hot Rod and Galvatron had their little duel. Maybe we'll see a little one-on-one -on -one battle between Hot Rod and Megatron. I got my fingers crossed. For our next sequence, we have a pretty brief but brutal shot of Grimlock totally wrecking Barricade with a gnarly tail whip attack that would even make Greymon a little salty. I think this is the first on-screen action we've seen from Barricade in his robot mode and I cannot stress enough how much I love his new design compared to the weird insect-like one we've got in TF1 and 3. He looks like a bruiser who's out for vengeance. The last and final scene I want to talk about is in regards to Bumblebee. This scene was a big eyebrow raiser and most viewers were calling it a flat out spoiler that will somewhat reduce some of the hype regarding his brutal battle with Optimus Prime. And that's simply because Bumblebee has somehow found a way to reassemble himself. After all the trailers we've seen, there's been this looming feeling that Bumblebee could possibly die in his battle with Optimus Prime. Now I have to say this because some of you refuse to listen clearly. I'm not saying that B will die. As a matter of fact, I don't think he'll die in the slightest. I just bring it up because it's the main topic of conversation and it's the main thing we've seen throughout all the promotions. But anyways, the big question is, if Bumblebee possesses this ability, exactly how does this raise the stakes of his fight with Optimus? For all we know, he can perform this technique as soon as Optimus Prime tries to stab him. But I'm not too bummed about this, I'm guessing it's a little maneuver he learned over the years hanging with Cade. And if I'm gonna be realistic, a Transformer's major vitals are mainly their spark, so as long as that's intact, I think it's all good. I know some of the viewers have been mentioning that this method could have something to do with the Forge of Solace since it wields the power to restore things back to normal and build new weaponry, and I gotta be honest, that's a good speculation. If you look at the hammer closely, it does look like something that came from B or his new special melee weapon of choice. Maybe it was initially a part of him and enabled him to reassemble himself in some kind of way, but if that's the case, he would have learned how to fix his vocal processors by now. Anyways, that's all I have to talk about regarding the new international trailer. Now I've been totally optimistic on what the new writers room have been doing with this expanded Transformers universe. I love how they're trying to take all the previous elements that Michael Bay overlooked in the sequels and making sure that certain things don't totally contradict what have already been established in earlier films. All of that is perfectly fine and dandy, but I gotta be real with you guys. I'm sort of disappointed that certain things that have already been fleshed out in the official prequel comments have been glossed over. Yeah, one could argue that the continuity was still screwed beyond belief because of the films, but certain things went on to inspire different spin-offs of Transformer lore. Like how Megatron originally damaged Bumblebee's vocal processors during the Cybertron Wars. That was later utilized in the War for Cybertron game and other aligned continuities like the TF Prime series. I hope they're not trying to pass the Cybertronian Knights off as the first Transformer inhabitants of the Earth because it's blatantly obvious that that wasn't it. It's already been established in TF2 that the Primes were the first to step foot on the planet and actually come into contact with the first form of human inhabitants. Some things just shouldn't be tampered with, but I guess it's for the best if we're getting a more coherent expanded universe. Some things just have to be sacrificed because no sacrifice means no victory, right? Speaking of sacrifices and victories, I love how they managed to expand upon the Witwicky family lineage. I mean, granted, it doesn't really explain why a robot sporting modern day Lamborghini parts is doing walking around during those times, but hey. And I'm really interested in seeing what they do with Bumblebee's new origin leading up to the next film. Could this possibly set things up? We'll just have to wait and see. 
But anyways, I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below on the recent trailers. Do you like them or do you hate them? I honestly feel like this is a soft reboot we needed in order to go further with the future films. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future content. And if you want to stay informed on the latest TF5 news or if you like hearing about Transformers videos in general, subscribe. But anyways, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Go back. Back to the heart of the war.